Hey guys, Steve here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Uh, what you see on the screen here uh, in this top picture is a uh, scroll saw pattern that I published a while back. And what I want to do in this video is turn this uh, two-dimensional uh, PDF pattern into a solid 3D printer file that we can print out on our 3D printer. Now, if you go to my blog, uh, on my catalog, I have thousands of free patterns available that you can download. They're all downloaded as um, PDF files, but those PDFs, the actual pattern pages, uh, are kept as vectors so they can be loaded into other software and edited and changed. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take uh, one of these patterns, which happens to be a basket, and we're going to load it into this program right here called Inkscape. Now Inkscape is a free vector graphics program and you can find it at inkscape.org and it's a, a free program, very powerful. I don't personally use this. I use CorelDRAW with my vector graphics but uh, CorelDRAW is an expensive program so I wanted to show you how to do it on this free program. And once we get the file imported into Inkscape and save it back as an SVG file, then we can load that file into a free program called Blender. Now Blender is a very advanced um, 3D graphics engine program uh, that literally can take months if not years to learn how to use. So I'm going to take you through the very simple steps of just turning a pattern that you import into Blender into a 3D model. I'm not going to try to teach you how to use Blender because that's a, that's a big task, but that's what we're going to do. So when we get back into Inkscape here, let's get rid of these pictures. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Import. Once we get to Import, we're going to look for the PDF, uh, this one right here called basket123 and that will bring up the PDF import settings and what we can do is right now it's set on to import all pages if we just hit OK it'll take a second here and it will import all of those pages into Inkscape now we don't need this page obviously, we don't need this page, we don't need the pictures, we're all good there. So we can get rid of all that. We can get rid of the text because we're not going to use that in this particular case. So we're going to get rid of everything we don't need. Okay. Now what we can do is we can take these and, all, and move all these parts of this basket to the first page over here so we can zero in on that page. I'm going to go up to Zoom, Zoom page. Now what I want to do is I want to center all these in this page uh, so they're all lined up. So I can drag a lasso and click all three of these parts. I can go to my align and you get to that over here in your menus. Align it under object, under align and distribute. That will bring up this tab over here. We're going to hit this button, which is center on vertical axis. And you can see that centered everything up. Then we're going to hit the button right below it, center on horizontal axis. So now we've got all those parts all centered together. And we're just going to do this because it's going to make it easier to position them once we get them into Blender. I'm going to select the top one here. And I am going to send this under object. I want to do lower to bottom. I'm going to take this out top rim part of the pattern. And I'm going to do object and lower. And that will put the ring that I only designed the pattern for one, but we're going to have multiple the, multiples of these. And they're going to be rotated from each other to make the offset. So with that selected, I'm going to hit the right mouse button on that piece and hit duplicate. Now I've got two of them. So now if I click on that and then click on it one more time, it'll turn my rotator else and I can take and rotate this top one over to where 
we now have it offset to where it'll look like a basket once we get these saved. So that's all there is in Inkscape. That's all we have to do. And you could do this on any pattern. And again, the only reason I lined everything up like this is because it makes it easier to put it back together in Blender. Uh, we could e just as easily have these moved around the page and then just get them back in Blender and move the parts until we get them lined up. But that's more challenging. So with that done, we're going to do File. And we're going to do Save. Uh, let's do file save as and uh, find the directory you want to save it to I'm going to name it test and hit save I've already got it in there so I'm going to override it okay so we're done with Inkscape we can get rid of that we are now ready to go to Blender when you get Blender loaded up it's going to come up with this cube in the middle just make sure you click on that cube and either hit the delete key or the X key and we can get rid of that now from within blender we're going to do file import SVG so we want scalable vector graphics the SVG file click on that navigate to the directory where you saved the file out of Inkscape and then we called it test so there it is import SVG so now we have these three, these four objects are imported and they're over here in our scene collection. So as I click on them, you'll see it's highlighting the different parts, but they're all just two dimensional. They're flat. So to keep them from being flat, we have to extrude them. And to do that, we're going to go down here to the object data properties. Click on that. We're going to click on the arrow next to geometry. Click on that. And right here is the amount that we want to extrude this. Now, the size of this isn't really going to matter because we can change it once we get into our slicer program uh, for the 3D printer. So in this case, I just happen to know that it's set in meters. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to hit 0.12. And we just ex extruded that one part to 0.12 meters again select the next one up here in our scene collection go back down to extrude 0.12 next pattern up here in our scene collection extrude 0.12 next pattern 0.12 now we could we could change the scale or the the size of each one of these parts they I these all happen to be the same thickness so that's why I'm using 0.12 all the time but if I were to go over here and hit one it would make that pattern that particular part much taller so let's go back to 0.12 now what we need to do is we need to select these different pieces come over here to our move triangle we can take them we can move these pieces around now select the next one move it up that's going to be on top so we'll move that to the top select the next one that's going to be on the bottom so there's our four parts that we need for this basket what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and I'm using uh, there's different ways to move the screen around and I'll let you figure that out because it's going to depend on how you set it up I'm going to take this bottom ring and I'm going to move it down to where it's on top of this ring right here or the bottom piece of it. I'm going to take the next ring and I'm going to move it down. So obviously that would make a pretty short basket. So what I'm going to do is click on the first ring, right click, hit duplicate link and without moving your mouse click the left mouse button. That duplicated that part and kept it in the same place with our move arrow selected we can now move this part up and then we can go down to the next one right click duplicate link left click move up let's see if we got that too far up okay we're pretty close right click duplicate link left click move that part up and we will, for right now, say that's good enough for our basket. So now we can come up to our top ring. We can bring it down. And now we literally have a 3D basket that we can export out of Blender by going File, 
export and our 3D printer will accept an STL file so we're going to click on the STL file we'll go back to wherever we want to save it to and let's call it test also export STL now if we go to our 3D slicer that came with your 3D printer in this case I'm using Ultimaker Cura because that's what came with my uh, newest 3D printer I can actually load that test STL right here into Cura and in this case it loaded it in really really small but that's no big deal we can come in here and select it go over here to our scale let's say we're going to make it 150 millimeters and there is our 3D printer now in this case the reason it looks a little funny is because I didn't get the uh, pieces close enough together they weren't touching so if we go back into blender and readjust this one more time let's go down to that one needs to come down a little I think right, right there that looks good that one's okay this one needs to come down a little see I've got them just slightly overlapping so they're touching that's all I'm trying to do here and we'll take this one lower it down to there now let's do the same export again export STL file will write over the test STL go back into Cura get rid of this one and let's load it in there again see if we get a better result this time and there we didn't get our error message we did still get um, a very small print but again we can change that size once we get into Cura let's just go to 150 millimeters which is that and now we can send this to our 3d printer and we'll have a basket that looks like the one I showed you on the first screen just that simple so that those are the basic steps for taking a two-dimensional pattern from my scroll saw catalog taking each of the individual parts extruding them in blender putting them back together and then once you get them all back together then you can export that as an STL file which is a three-dimensional file that you can use in your 3d printer now I, I know there's a whole lot more to this because Blender is such a complicated program. Inkscape also has a little bit of a learning curve as well. So once you take all those things into account, you're going to have to practice a little bit. But those are the basic steps. I'm Steve Good. Thanks for being here with me at the Scroll Saw Workshop. We'll catch you next time.